Right, okay, so we're going to use our kitchen laboratory to attempt to make um, some alcohol. Now, I've cleaned and sterilised everything that we've got going on here, so I'm going to put a pair of gloves on in the hope that I'm not going to contaminate anything. Um, but the idea basically is to exploit the fermentation process of uh, certain yeasts. Now, the one that we're going to use today is uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And basically we are going to provide it with sucrose um, in the medium of water, so it be aqueous, and hopefully it will ferment that water to create um, ethanol, create alcohol. So what we're going to start by doing is adding water to our pan. And what we need to make is a sugar syrup. Now I've calculated this currently at... Um, I've calculated this that we will need 990 grams of sugar to two tablespoons of yeast in four litres of water. So I'm going to have to do this in stages because I haven't got a pan big enough that will hold four litres of water. So I'm just going to grab my sugar. Normal table sugar that you get from the supermarket, um, just the normal stuff, perfectly fine. And we're going to want to weigh out 990 grams. So we're going to need a vessel that is big enough to hold 990 grams of sugar. Which I should have thought about beforehand. I think we'll do 390 in this lot. So that means that we need another 600 grams that we are short of. So it's remember 600 grams. And never rely on remembering. And rely on needing to add some more. Now what the intention of this is to make some sugar syrup. Basically we are going to heat some water up on the side and as we're warming it we're going to add the sugar in. Now the yeast is sensitive to temperature so we can't add the yeast immediately so what the order that I'm going to do it in is prep the uh, sugar syrup mix, let that cool and once that cools below the optimum temperature um, below 40 degrees we can then look at adding our yeast. So the first part of this video is going to be me prepping everything making sure we've got everything ready and then the second part is going to be me um, combining everything together, then we're going to wait for two weeks, let it ferment. Once it's fermented, we're then going to open it up and see what we've got. Right, okay, so that's 390 grams of sugar. Now, obviously, this isn't all going to go into one, but we can start adding it. And the idea is that we get it so it dissolves.
Okay, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me dissolve all this in here because that would be incredibly boring. Once I've got all the sugar mix set up, we're going to go back to the point where we're hydrating the yeast and get it ready for adding. That should be the next video that you see. Right, okay, so the next thing we actually want to do is rehydrate our yeast. Now, I'm using Baker's yeast, um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Can't get hold of any brewer's yeast at the moment with the current climate being as it is. So what I'm going to do now is rehydrate it, yeah? So basically suspend it in some water. Now a key feature of this is, um, if your water is too hot, it will kill it, yeah? So looking at the optimum temperature for um, S. cerevisiae, it's between 32 and 45 degrees Celsius. Um, that's what the literature points to. So anything higher than that, we're gonna be at risk of damaging our yeast. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly check the temperature of my water. It's climbing, 34, 34.2, 34.4, and we just want to see it level out. And there we go, it stopped at 34, still climbing ever so slightly. But it's roughly around 34 degrees, so um, perfect temperature. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this yeast, which I've measured out here, we've got uh, two tablespoons, I'm going to put this into here, and then I'm going to give it 15 minutes um, to reabsorb yeah, the water, because obviously it's dried and I want, it not, I want to put it into solution. So I'm going to tip it in, we're going to mix it up with a clean spoon, like I said, everything being clean. what we want to do is give that roughly about 15 minutes in there Give that 15 minutes to rehydrate itself, and then we're going to sprinkle some sugar in to see if it's actually been activated. At which point, then we're going to add that to our sugar solution. Right, once we've let our yeast hydrate for a reasonable amount of time. What we want to do is check it's actually working. Um, one quick way of doing that is basically just to add a tiny bit of sugar to the solution and just see if we start to get some forming happening. There we go, I can see it bubbling. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is check the temperature of our sugar solution. Because we don't want to be able to add it into that if it's too hot.
So we're still at 48.4 in there. If we put that in, that's going to kill our yeast, which we don't want to do. So this is the point where I'd imagine most people get stuck here. Get the temperature right. Don't add it whilst it's too hot. It's much better to wait. Let it cool down. Um, you need it below 45.4 um, degrees C. But I'd be aiming for probably late 30s, maximum 40 degrees at this point. Right, okay, so we're currently a little bit late, so I've now checked my uh, temperatures. This is running, this is currently about sort of 37 degrees, which is within that range of 32 to 45. Um, what I'm going to do, you can see now that the yeast is forming quite well, so it's obviously become quite active. What I'm now going to do is add the yeast to this mix. Yeah, so this um, I'm going to do slowly. Yeah because obviously it might start to react as soon as it's added in but we're going to add the yeast in slowly so we add all the yeast in we should hopefully see it start to bubble now the important thing to consider here is have we got enough headspace as well we want to make sure we've got enough headspace in our bottle so that's how we yeast now added in. We're just going to give that a quick shake because I haven't got anything to stir it with. Give that a quick shake, make sure it's all shook up. And then what we're going to do is we are going to seal the top. Now this here, what you can see, is actually a homemade airlock. The idea behind this is that it should keep, it should let. Uh, gases out but it doesn't let gases in yeah so basically the water the air the gas comes up through here bubbles up through the water is let out through the hole in the top yeah but it will not let any gas back through it it will only let gas in so we leave that on the side and what I'm going to do is leave that running now and hopefully we should start to see it bubble we should start to see it bubbling away so once it starts to bubble, I'll take another video and um, hopefully you can see it.